The next set of compounds that we're going to take a look at are cycloalkenes and cycloalkynes. Now we've seen cycloalkanes, which was taking um, a molecule and making it into a cyclical shape. Cycloalkenes and cycloalkynes, same thing. They're cyclical molecules, except for this time, as you might have guessed from the name, ending in "-ene", or "-ine", um, they are going to contain a double or triple bond. I've included the general formulas. Um, this first one here, this is for cycloalkanes, and this second one is for cycloalkynes. Now we tend not to see a whole lot of cycloalkynes. They're kind of, um, I think, a little bit unstable. So, focusing more on cycloalkenes. General formula for cycloalkenes, CnH2n minus 2. Now, if you've been paying really close attention, you know that this is a general formula we've already seen. Where did we see this? We've seen this as the general formula for just regular plain old alkynes. What does that mean? Again, it means that cycloalkenes and alkynes are, can be isomers of one another. So for example, if you are given the formula um, C3, H4, that compound, given that molecular formula, you would be looking at something that was either um, an alkene, so perhaps it's propene, sorry, an alkyne, so perhaps it's propine, uh, or it's a cycloalkene, so maybe it's cyclopropene. Okay? Um, naming is the same as for cycloalkanes, except for this one super important point here. Okay, the multiple bond, so whether it's a double or a triple bond, and again, we tend to normally look just at cycloalkenes, so we're just talking um, about the double bond usually. Uh, we'll always have the number one spot. Now, what does that mean? It's not just like number one, like it's a favorite child, like me and my family. No, it actually means something really important we have to keep in mind is that it's between carbons one and two. C's in there. Okay, so the multiple bond is always between carbons one and two. Has to be. All right. I'm going to show you guys uh, a couple of examples and show you how well maybe you might think that you're calling it carbon one uh, when really you're not. Again, the naming, ladies and gents, stays the same as it was uh, when we were looking at alkanes, cycloalkanes, alkenes and alkynes, okay? The only thing that we're adding is let's pay close attention to that double bond and we need to make sure we get the right suffix. All right, kind of tough for me to find um, examples uh, or pictures of things online and I'm not really an expert at drawing organic compounds um, in Word or anything like that. Uh, so I'm just gonna draw them right here and you can draw those down. So let's take a look. start relatively straightforward. There we go. Okay, so again, when we take a look at cyclical compounds, that line structure really makes a big difference. Um, if we had to draw C's and H's for this, that would be kind of annoying. So, clearly this is a hexagon, so there's going to be six carbons. There's a double bond, so that's going to end in ene. Um, what else do we need to know? Well, nothing really. It's a cyclo compound. Um, if there were branches, we, of course, would number, but we're not too worried about that. I'm just going to throw the numbers up there so you can see what I'm talking about when I say the double bond is between the first carbon and the second carbon, okay? Now, what's really nice about this, because the double bond is always going to be between carbons 1 and 2, we don't need to indicate the number of the location of the double bond, okay? So when we're naming this compound, cyclo and then the name of, uh, of, the, uh, of the ring structure, hex. We don't need to call it hex-1-ene, just hexene. So this is cyclohexene. Six carbons in a ring with one double bond present. Moving on, letter B. Let's put a branch in here. Mm, let's do maybe something. Oh, I 
have to color coordinate, of course. Let's do this and something here and a little something there. And let's go there. There we go. That's attached. Okay, cool. We have four carbons in a ring here. All right. So this is going to be cyclobutene. That's my parent. Okay. Next step, which is to number, is really, really important. I need to make sure that I am numbering this in a way so that this double bond falls between carbons one and two, which means either this is going to be my first carbon or this is going to be my first carbon. And then whichever one I choose there is going to determine do I, um, do I number clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, so um, what I can do is I can start here. Let's just see what works. Call this carbon one. This is two, three, and four. Okay. Again, so I what I can't do, I'll write that in green. What I can't do is go call this one, two, three, and four. No, because we're not going to have a double bond between one and four. That's incorrect. When I number this way, I give my branches the three and four spots, which they're going to be. Okay, so now it's a question, well, if I number this way, as I have written in red, um, ethyl gets the third spot, methyl gets the fourth. However, I'll do this one in blue. This is going to get slightly confusing. I could also number this way, two, three, four, so that methyl gets the third spot and ethyl gets the fourth. fourth. Guys, the thing you want to keep in mind when you have an option right? Both ways of numbering, red or blue, um, both ways keep that double bond between the first and second carbon. So now it's just a matter of, well, geez, which, um, which branch do I want to have the lower number? And the answer is whichever one comes first alphabetically, okay? So ethyl comes first alphabetically, so therefore we want to keep the way we numbered in the red um, as the correct way. So that brings us to our branches. We've got an ethyl group at three and a methyl group at four. And in this way, I kind of think that cycloalkenes are even easier than just regular old alkenes because you don't even have to talk about the double bond. You just have to make sure you number correctly. So when you put the name together, you don't need to worry about, oh, what, how do I write that again? Or this doesn't sound proper. So 3-ethyl, 4-methyl, cyclobutene. Again, don't include the number for the bond. One more example, and then that's it for me. In this lesson. Let's do this. And put a couple of branches on here. There we go. Okay. So again, we need to make sure that this double bond here is included uh, between the first and second carbon. So either this carbon is going to be my first one or this carbon is going to be my first one. And then what we want to do is make sure that we are also giving the branches the lowest possible number. The only way to do that is to call this carbon one. This is two, three, four, and five. Okay, if you remember in the lesson on cycloalkanes, I said if you add up the number of all the branches, that want, we want that to be the lowest possible number. So if we add up two and three, for where our branches are located from the parent chain, that makes five. That's the lowest possible number we're gonna get, okay? The other way, I'll do the wrong way in green, okay? The other way would be to call this one, two, three, four, and five. So then we would get uh, a branch at one and a branch at five. Well, that makes six. So that is why we cannot number that way, okay? So my parent, 
five carbons in a ring with a double bond. Cyclopantene. My branches. Two methyl groups on the second and third carbons. Throw it all together. Exclamation point on that one. Hopefully you guys are finding this straightforward. Um, again, there are just a few short questions uh, for homework associated with this lesson. Once you are done that, you need to do two things. There's a lab with bonus marks, you'll be interested to know, and there's a quiz. Okay, Please see me when you are ready to do either one or both. Thanks, guys.